everyone, how are we all? Paul79 here, hope you're safe and well. Uh, welcome to part 13 of my home EV build, uh, where I am attempting to make a Porsche Boxster look like a GT3 RS replica, and also make it an EV. Now, um, we haven't spoken for a good three months, and I'm really sorry, and I hope you've all been okay. Um, I just want to apologise for the uh, the lack of videos, but um, it's actually three months to the day almost um, since I last uh, showed you what I was doing with the front battery box. But rest assured, those three months I've been busy working away, and you can probably see here that the car is looking a little different. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting sort of photos and a couple of videos on, on the progress I've been making. But the best news is I got the actual EV working about a good month ago now, but I managed to connect it all up, accelerator pedal, you know, switched it on and the wheels turned. Uh, and I was just so happy that I'd actually managed to, to make it work. Annoying though, I can't actually show you that now on the video today because I've actually disconnected it because um, I'm f at the final stages of installing the last battery box, which is the one right at the rear of the car. So it's not connected up. But I didn't kill myself, I'm still here. And uh, yeah, so um, what I'm gonna do in this video, there's nothing in particular, but I'm just gonna show you what three months of uh, work looks like. And uh, I'm gonna dedicate this video to Jan. Uh, Jan is the son of a friend of mine at work, Ronald. Hello, Ronald. Hello, Jan. Um, Jan basically sent me a message via his dad saying, what's going on? You haven't done a video for ages. Is everything all right? But no, I'm really sorry. But um, what you find with these sort of builds is, um, you often do things a lot in parallel so it's not like you go right today I'm going to make all the brakes work or today I'm going to make the aircon work or the, or the batteries you know you sort of do things in parallel and it takes a while before you can actually show something from sort of start to finish anyway I'm rambling on so let's see what three months work looks like see you later bye so let's start with the back of the car and the outside of the car so it's looking a little different now since uh, since you last see it, um, but basically, yeah, first of all here, we have a lovely ironing board, or also known as uh, as a spoiler, so I've, uh, I've got that fitted. The reason why I'm sort of talking about that, even though it's nothing to do with EV, is these brackets here, these L-shaped brackets, I had to make them myself because the previous owner, well, didn't they didn't come with the car. Uh, previously um, so yeah I made them myself out of aluminium had them all powder coated and uh, I'm really pleased how they've uh, turned out so um, yeah got the spoiler there along the side of the car you'll notice we've got some wing mirrors so these are real GT3 RS wing mirrors that were damaged both of them were damaged and I've managed to modify them and install them on the side uh, where they're meant to go other side of the doors because the box the mirrors normally go here This one isn't quite finished because I'm waiting for some trim panels, but if you look around here you'll see That this one is all fully installed all in the right position haven't wired them up yet But uh, that's uh, that's a job for a for a rainy weekend um, to the front of the car you can see we've actually got the front wings, bumper, and bonnet in place. Some of you may have known or may recall that this bonnet had some horrible big holes in there that uh, the previous owner had cut out to put some vents, but it didn't look like they would work. Um, so in the end, um, I got a good friend of mine um, to fill fill these holes in and refiberglass it, and it looks actually fantastic. So it looks like it, it, it was before. Um, headlights, I've actually did them today, so the headlight trays have been mounted and sitting pretty in the holes. Um, what else have we got in the car? Um, yeah, so my uh, charging port here, if I open this up, take this cover off, that is all now fully in place, you can't really see it there, but believe me, um, it's there. Um, you can see how it uh, runs through there. I had to make some sort of bracket to sort of have it just hanging there um, in midair. 
and then I put that cover on and then shut the flap. So on the inside of the car, a lot has uh, changed actually. Well, I got a seat, which is nice because this car didn't have any. But the uh, sort of um, the main event was this center console that I've made. So this is off a 718 Boxster, um, and I basically cut and shut it and managed to make it work with the 987 Boxster sort of uh, radio and aircon uh, vents here. So basically I had to make a sort of a frame to put this in at an angle. This is all sort of standard 718 Boxster. These are the side panels that I managed to sort of cut and shut and merge with the original Boxster ones here. And then I've covered it all in uh, fake Alcantara also done it on the lower dash part there um, and of course I actually have a dashboard so this is a 9, 911 997 dashboard I don't know if I'll actually use this particular one uh, I've got the five uh, gauge speedo in there um, but yeah I needed to have a put a dashboard in so I could sort of work on this center console bit and then here I just got a, PK, a 911 PKD sort of surround made the hole bigger and then mounted my uh, uh, drive and uh, reverse selector switch in there. So that all just sits all lovely. Um, some of you may have uh, may have noticed already, but in order to have this sort of center console, you have to get rid of your handbrake lever because that's what the 987 Boxster had. So what I have in this glove box, you can see that is actually an actuator here that's mounted in the original handbrake lever sort of bracket. And it just moves in and out. Here, let me shine the torch. It just moves in and out and you can see it pulls the cables. And there's a little micro switch so I can adjust how much it pulls. Um, and that's run off a couple of relays that are sort of hidden under here with fuse boxes. And basically, yeah, I have a switch here that basically does the handbrake on and off. So further out the back of the car here, my Orion BMS is now housed in this lovely box because uh, previously it was just sort of bolted to this metal here. But yeah, now it's all sort of hidden in a box. I can still access it because this front panel comes off. Um, got wires coming out here. If I come round this side, watch the spoiler. What we have here is here's all my cell taps. I've still got one to come in, but there's all my cell tap wires going in. Um, and then there's the current sensor wire coming out there at the bottom. And uh, a lot of my cell tap wiring is, uh, is sort of down there. And it runs sort of inside the engine bay along the bottom as well to the front battery box. Um, and yeah. It's all hopefully quite a neat solution. So underneath the car, this isn't anything you haven't sort of seen before. Well, I suppose you haven't seen it with the drive shafts connected. But yeah, so the Tesla LDU and battery boxes are all installed in there. Basically, I've got Model 3 um, drive shaft stumps that have the top part of the Boxster welded to them, I believe. So then that means I can fit the basically the Boxster drive shafts. So they're in, in place there and they work because I've had the wheels spinning. Um, I have these pipes here. So this is part of the cooling system. So these are going to be connected to the, the rear battery box that's going to go in this area here. We have more uh, high voltage cables that connect to the battery box here at the rear as well. Um, I'm currently working on a mounting solution for this battery box. There's gonna be a separate video on that because that's not a kit. I've had to make that up myself. But I'm pleased to say, I think it's gonna work. Before I forget, I must mention this because it was such a job, but I removed my clutch pedal. So that is all completely gone now. So I've just got a brake and accelerator. And yeah, I managed to, you know, get the Boxster accelerator pedal to work with the T2C controller. And um, yeah, it makes the, uh, the motor spin faster. So in the front of the uh, car, a lot's been going on as well. Um, 
you remember me battery box that I have here installed well you know that is all plumbed in uh, all these pipes here are basically part of the coolant system that's my power steering pump that's all connected and plumbed in um, I have a radiator here on the front of the car so that is the radiator for the battery circuit and then the original radiators here that which is uh, one either side that's actually air con the one behind it's the radiator that does the LDU but yeah what we have here we talked about these boxes before these high voltage ones um, this one here this is uh it's got a contactor inside it and it's basically taking the high voltage from the junction box via a smaller wire that you can't actually see there and sending it to a couple of things it's sending it to my heater so i've basically although you can't see it you see um hang on see this thing here these two sort of pipes that's basically was my old heater matrix, right? But that's gone now and inside it is one of the Felton sort of electric high voltage heaters. So basically I've got high voltage going to that. And then also what we have here, if I shine my torch, this thing is a high voltage Tesla aircon compressor that again I have installed there so that's sort of in the battery sort of tray where the original battery 12 volt battery was um, it's not connected up yet I've done all the wiring for it just haven't done the pipes I've got my battery here that I've had to switch around to make it sort of work um, so yeah lots of lots of head scratching of where things to go etc so another thing we have here is basically this thing, which is the eye booster, right? So this is for my brakes. Now this was installed, I think, in the last video, but I didn't talk about it. But yes, I've got all the wiring done now for it. Um, it's connected to the original braking system via these pipes here. And then I had to make this sort of remote reservoir sort of um, contraption here because I have a trim panel that goes over this and there was no way it will work um, just using the, the eye booster. So the, the original one from the eye booster. So I've basically done this wire, uh, this, this tubing here and that's my brake um, reservoir. Haven't got it quite working just yet. I need to tweak the rod that basically go connects to the brake pedal but basically all the brakes are bled uh, the brakes have got new front brakes on here as well because those ones I refurbished didn't work so we've got some nice big eight pots there um, they're all bled up so they're ready to go and yeah I just need to uh, troubleshoot and uh, get the sort of pedal in the right um, position I'll do a proper video on that later about uh, one, once I finally get it to work but I'm going to wait for the car to come down because it's hard actually reaching in there while we're in the uh, front as well these two boxes so previously my uh, car amplifier was here but I've also done all the wiring for the lights okay um, for, for the car and what we have in here is like canvas error cancellers and I've had to basically redo the loom which is standard it's kit car stuff it's not um, it's not EV stuff but all of these connectors here you see are basically for the lights and I've designed it in such a way that if I need to take this whole sort of battery box out I don't have to remove these boxes I just unconnect them and I can lift the whole thing out should I need to but yeah there is a lot involved in the wiring um, for, for, for these cars because you have to um, because a lot of the lights on the on the Porsche the Porsche lights the 911 lights use LEDs um, whereas on the box they don't they just use bulbs and uh, if you don't put these special error canceller things in uh, you get errors on your dashboard which um, hopefully they will uh, solve the problem and then just in the rear boot these big silver boxes you see either side here this is a similar thing for the rear lights they haven't got canvas error cancers they've just got resistors in there that again uh, do things like slow down the flash of the indicator because um, uh, 
uh, their LEDs as opposed to bulbs and stop errors coming up on your dashboard. So I've been doing a lot of wiring. It takes a long time and you know, I've, um, I've got all the lights working. So, you know, here, this is just the light. Uh, this is the plug that goes uh, to, to the rear lights. They're just sitting here. Uh, we've done it done it for everything um, you know there was a lot to do but uh, I'm glad I've sort of sorted out that that part of the project while I was waiting to uh, to do EV things so there you go gang that's three months uh, work condensed down into not actually that that long I feel a bit hard done by because there's absolutely been hundreds of hours spent on the car and I whizzed through it in quite a short space of time but I'm sure you understand you know there is a lot involved and you know I like to do it right first time and uh, and such like so anyway that's it for this episode um, hopefully the next one will be uh, a bit more detail about installing the rear battery box because um, I reckon in a good couple of weeks I'll be able to put that and fit that to the car and then connect it up and then I can actually show you on YouTube the wheels spinning. Anyway, until next time, take care everyone. Bye bye!